I'm not going to film the whole thing on this particular instrument, but uh, it's a Gibson Hummingbird. Very nice old instrument. Take a look at the uh, problem. It's the same typical problem that you see with all these adjustable bridges. It's cracked all the way across here. It's so cracked and so pulled and strained in there that you can't even get the strings out. And, and you know, they're really hard to get out. They're st stuck up in there and, you know, in that broken area. So you have to kind of use some extra prying power to get them out of there. See? They're just really badly stuck. So what I'm going to do on this one is I'm just going to take this off and make a new bridge for it. I'm going to try to finish it so that I have it ready for tomorrow evening. It's about noon on Thursday and there's going to be a jam tomorrow evening and I'm pretty sure this guy will be coming there. This has been sitting in the office here for a while. I just haven't had time to work on it. But I think I can get it ready and have it ready for tomorrow evening. I will say you don't normally see this under an adjustable bridge, but there's shims under here. I guess that's because this side wasn't adjusting, only this side. So this side here doesn't really work. I see why the uh, whole insert is spinning. So I don't know if I can hold that insert. I can spin it inside there with my hand. I may have to get a pliers inside here. Yep, probably because it's, it's spinning my hand. Can't even say for sure I can hold it with pliers. That's assuming I can get the pliers on it. Not easy to do through a hole like that. Your hands don't operate in a tight, confined space as good as they could. I think maybe I got it there finally. I think I'm holding it now, maybe. Yeah, maybe not. It's spinning. Man, it's tight. Well, actually, I think it is coming out. Wow. It's very hard. I think we got it. Amazing. Got an extra bolt on this one over here. So if I can get it off of there or not. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It came off pretty clean. You got a little tear out here, but it's just paper thin, so it's not enough to worry about. The, uh, the bushings here are loose, and I think I can you know, just pop them out by hand. Now we're going to clean all this area up and make a new bridge and stick her back on there. Oh, the old Gibson Hummingbird here has uh, been sitting overnight with the new bridge. And we'll take this off and see what we ended up with. This was gluing the bridge plate back in. The bridge plate was loose in the front, and uh, so that should be tight now too. And I think we're in much better shape than we were, for sure. I had a little block of wood up in there pressing against the bridge plate to hold it up with that clamp, and I think we're in good shape. Once again, I thought I had the camera rolling and I didn't. Here's my rig. I get a lot of questions about this intonation rig. It's just a bent piece of coat hanger that hangs on the tailpiece or that on this uh, strap button. It acts like a tailpiece is what I meant to say. Then I put a little pads under here so that we don't get any scarring or anything. I just have hooks on here to hook the strings into. I just have a saddle sitting on top of the bridge that I can move around. And you will need different size height saddles for different setups. I just have a lot of spare saddles laying around so I just pick one that works for this setup. And anyway then I test the intonation. I just did this moments ago on camera and didn't get it recorded so here we're going to do it again. You have to be a little careful when you're setting the intonation. There's a lot of factors, you know, and like I had it at an awkward angle so that you could see it here and it, you know, it wasn't quite on the dead center exactly on a couple things there, but when I have it turned around here facing me and I, and I take my time with it, I've tested it multiple times and it's dead center. The factors that affect it are a lot of factors. Where you set your tuner, I mean, it'll pick it up in different places. So, you know, you want to keep your tuner in one spot. You want to uh, hit the string at the same level. You know, if I hit the string really hard and the next time I hit it really soft, you know, that, that's difference. So you want to try to keep everything consistent. Hit your string at the same amount of pressure. 
press the string down with the same amount of pressure. I mean, if I press it harder, it's going to bend the string more. You know, it's just, there's a myriad of factors. So you try to keep consistency is the main thing when you're setting your intonation. And you do it multiple times. And it doesn't hurt if it's your own guitar, maybe to let it set and come back an hour later, check it again. Maybe check it the next day even. That way you know you're getting it in the right spot. I've been doing it for a long time now and I know when my tuner is lying to me and I know when it's right and you know all those kinds of things affect everything. So you want to test it a number of times though even if even after you've been doing it a while you want to make sure that you've got it where you want it because once you cut the slot you're there. <laughs> you know so I'm going to check this one one more time back where I had it and then we're going to go ahead and cut the slot. Hopefully you can see the tuner there. I'm leaving it where I had it set up. When I had it at an odd angle, I think something slipped. I don't think I was on a, a full E anyway. I think I was on an E flat. See, that looks pretty good. Now I'll hit the high E. Might just be a hair sharp on the high E, but boy, it's just, it's really close. I'm gonna call that good right where it's at. And we're going to draw a very, very fine pencil line on the front edge of this. And then when I put my drill bit in there, I'll put my bit in there so that it's cutting right along the edge of that. It'll be right behind the line. You won't find it on a well-traveled highway, not even on a dusty gravel road. Wanna be there when you find it For it's not on any maps I know Out across the field through the pasture Climb along the steep and rocky trail When you cross that little creek in the valley You'll see that fine covered church on the hill off camera, I made a new deer antler saddle that fits the slot perfectly. Uh, it's probably a little tall right now, but we're going to adjust that here in a minute. Before I put the strings on it, I wanted to oil this piece of rosewood down that I built the uh, bridge out of. That just makes it nice and dark, matches the other piece of rosewood real good. And it just preserves the wood a little bit better. He's got a place here where the pick has just wore the top out. I'm just going to put a little saturation of oil in that spot there too. For two reasons, it'll help seal the wood a little bit. It uh, will just make it blend in a little bit better to you where you just don't notice it quite so bad. There's a little bit of same kind of issue around the bridge where some wood is chipped out here or finish or something from days going by. I don't think that happened while I was doing it. Anyway, we'll put a little on there too to make it kind of match and these pick scratches up here too, we'll do that. And This just helps it kind of blend together. You just don't, they don't pop so bad. They just don't look so bad from across the room, if you will. You can still see them, but they're just a little more blended in. And then you always wipe your linseed oil off after you put it on. Just makes a nicer looking job. I'm going to lightly level the frets off camera and recrown them off camera and maybe scrape the fretboard. I'm not going to film all that because it's been in so many videos. But then we're ready to put the strings on it. Well, the old Gibson Hummingbird is all complete. Uh, the action is just real nice. It's uh, a 90 and 80, which is where I like to end up with them. No buzzing. The action up here is right at 18 thousandths. Um, I bet it hasn't been set up that well in quite a long time. Getting this down a lot lower. By the way, this bridge is actually a thinner bridge than was on there. I had to do that in order to get the strings down and, uh, you know, without doing a total neck reset and all that. The neck is on the edge of a, a reset. It doesn't need one, but it, uh, if it gets any worse, it will, you know. But getting this down lower like that and getting the action lower and the, the saddle lower and all that, that helps get that angle more in favor of back here to give it a little more strength too. So it should be fine. I don't think it'll be a problem. I remember the year the Clayton Delaney died. 
Well, they said for the last two weeks that he suffered and cried. Well, it made a big impression on me, though I was just a barefoot kid. Well, they said he got religion at the end, and I'm glad that he did. Clayton was the best guitar picker in our town. And I thought he was a hero, so I used to follow Clayton around. Clayton used to tell me, son, you ought to put that old guitar away. He said, there ain't no money in it, it'll lead you to an early grave. Yeah, I remember the year that Clayton Delaney died. Yeah, just a little short version of that tune, but the old Gibson Hummingbird uh, looks really nice. You know, it's got its uh, war scars, but uh, it's a nice old guitar, and it's going to be good now for another 50 years of service at least. Thank you for watching.